Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a, an accomplished wellness entrepreneur and author from New Delhi, India, Mr. Kapil Gupta. Kapil, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you so much, Ashutosh. Uh, Kapil is the founder of SOLH, Soul Wellness, uh, a paddle entrepreneur and a mental health activist. He's an author uh, of a book titled In My Head and India Vision, New Age Equality. So Kapil, before we talk about your book, In My Head, tell me about your journey in brief and what inspired you to start Soul Wellness. Sure. So Soul Wellness is really uh, an outcome of my working as a digital marketing agency for 15 odd years where everybody that I used to work with was between the ages of 20 to 25, 27. Right. And, you know, a few years back, bang in the middle of COVID, we saw a flip, a switch flip, mm -hmm. which meant people's lives, specifically in uh, uh, youngsters. And then as I delved more into it, I saw it was prevalent and pervasive all across the spectrum. Mm. People's life change. Mm. Uh, things like stress, things like burnout, things like emotional pressure, uh, you know, things like depression, uh, they, while they were always there, but now they seem to become unworkable. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I started looking into this area more and I knew there is a scalable tech solution that is required for people to be able to handle their mental health well. Mm -hmm. And soul wellness is a result of all of that research and all of that study. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we came across and came through uh, and devised the soul wellness platform. Wonderful. And what are some of the areas uh, you handle in soul wellness? So soul wellness is a tech platform. So essentially, when we looked at mental health, when we looked at soul wellness, we said there are three kinds of tools that people require. Mm -hmm. Number one, self-help tools. So tools that people can use by themselves with the platform. Mm -hmm. Number two, community support tools, where they work with community at large. Mm -hmm. And number three, expert services, where they are working with an expert. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a clinical expert, which means a psychiatrist, a psychologist, or a counselor, or whether it's a non-clinical expert or an allied therapist, like a yoga, meditation, performing arts, you know, homeopathy, Ayurveda, this, that, and the other. Hmm. Very interesting. So let's now talk about your book, uh, In My Head, which is the book that you've uh, written about mental health. Um, how do you define mental wellness, Kapil, and what is its importance in today's world? So, um, Ashutosh, let me uh, start by asking you a question. So, there are days, good days, when you wake up on the right side of the bed, when you are productive, efficient, when you like, you know, life in general and everything goes well, and you have a certain level of productivity. Mm -hmm. And then there are days that are bad days. You, know, you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, you are unhappy the whole day, you don't do as well or whatever. What is the difference in productivity between the two for you? Mm -hmm. It can be quite significant. <clears throat> so uh, that's the and that's what we are trying to address so what you are saying and you know uh, if the difference can be quite significant what you are saying is if i can provide you tools such that you have lesser of those bad days or if you, i can provide you tools such that on bad, bad days also you can feel slightly better mm -hmm. your efficiency productivity happiness can significantly go up mm -hmm. so why don't i do that Okay. That's that's really what we are on a mission to handle. Of course, we work with mental disorders. Of course, we work with people in depression and all that. But what really interests me is this area of pervasively, in a scalable manner, providing mental health services to everybody. Mm -hmm. The book is really talking about what does it mean? Number one, what does mental wellness even mean? I mean, for me, mental wellness is your ability to feel good about everything around mm -hmm. your ability. So what we did in the book was uh, we defined mental wellness in five adjectives, mm -hmm. being sad, being lonely, being stressed. Mm -hmm. These are the three adjectives that human beings always keep on trying to reduce. They mm -hmm. can never take it away, take it out, but reduce mm -hmm. being sad, being lonely, being stressed mm -hmm. and being happy and being having peace of mind. These are two adjectives that they keep on trying to increase. Mm -hmm. One of the things how we define mental health is these five adjectives and the capability to control everything around you with mm. these. Mm. 
And based on the work that you have done in this area, what are some common misconceptions people have about mental health? Um, number one, uh, mental disorders and mental health is not understood at all. Right. People try to uh, intermingle the two. Hmm. Number two, people think unless you get to that extreme state of depression, hmm. you can't get any support. Hmm. Number three, people don't even realize, and this is quite pervasive, people don't even realize the difference between a psychiatrist and a psychologist. Hmm. People don't even realize, you know, when who to go to, what to do. I mean, there is misconceptions all around. Mm. Most people look at things as behavioral uh, kind of issues, while they may actually be mental wellness issues. Mm. So, uh, to give you some examples, uh, you know, a very large percentage of Indian males suffers from ADHD. Mm -hmm. A very large percentage, nearly 10-12% of Indian males, adult Indian males suffer from undiagnosed ADHD. Hmm. So, you know, if you can work with these people, if you can provide them the capabilities and the tools and everything, it hmm. can just completely transform their lives. Fascinating. Fascinating. What great data. Thank you. So, therefore, I mean, as you mentioned, if so many people are not even aware, what are some of the early signs of mental distress that people and families or colleagues should be aware of? So firstly, let me say there are there is not even a question of early signs. Hmm. How I look at it is everybody requires mental health capabilities at every point in their life. Hmm. So you are essentially asking and you know, I just want to wanted to add this clarity. What you are essentially asking, what are the early signs of unworkability? Mm -hmm. Early signs of unworkability are, number one, when you get into situations of sadness, loneliness, and stress hmm. that you cannot get out of by yourself. Hmm. Number two, when, you know, you get into such stages when nothing else has happened. So, you know, sometimes you get into these stages where you are just sitting and you get into a bout of sadness or, you know, a bout of stress. Mm -hmm. Number three, when you get into panic and anxiety situations. Mm -hmm. Okay. So every time, whenever these, whenever anything happens, okay, you need to essentially keep, go back and, you know, take a step back and look at, is it really, uh, you know, uh, something that is either chronic. So it's, it keeps coming back again mm -hmm. and again, and again, or it is acute. Okay. If it is more acute and more chronic, then, you know, you know that you need to go and take a solution for it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great response. Kapil, you also speak about uh, psychological capital. Help me understand what is psychological capital? What is its significance and how can we develop it? So look at PSYCAP is like as uh, PSYCAP as we call it. Look at PSYCAP as a currency of mental health. Mm -hmm. Okay. Every time you take an action on your mental health, mm -hmm. you are essentially generating PSYCAP. Mm -hmm. This PSYCAP can either be utilized by you or it can be utilized by anybody else around you mm -hmm. in, you know, taking care of themselves and be mentally well. Right. What we did was when we were devising the soul wellness platform, we integrated PSYCAP across the platform. Mm -hmm. So you take a screening test on the platform, you get X number of points. You do a journaling, you get Y number of points. So anybody, as they are working through the platform, they get psychological capital points. Hmm. And, you know, that's the, that's like a currency that we integrated into the platform. It has right. an, uh, it has a relevance way beyond the platform as well hmm. in terms of how communities, you know, so uh, let me put it this way. Mental wellness is more, I mean, and I uh, genuinely can say it is more viral and more infectious than even COVID was. Amazing, amazing. Um, you know, think about this. You may be sitting in a bus where there is a person sitting like on the other side of the bus mm. doing some action, uh, not even things that you can hear, but mm. doing some actions, you know, creating some fuss and it will start impacting your mental health sitting on the other side of the bus. Mm. Very interesting. Very interesting. Thank you. And Kapil, what link do you find between economic conditions and mental health? So uh, huge. Mm -hmm. And on all three factors. Mm. Number one, as I said earlier, if mental health is something that significantly determines your efficiency, productivity, and happiness, mm. I mean, that's the first economic link. If I can mm. make you more productive, more efficient, I mean, that's mm. uh, economy right there. 
Number two, there is a huge loss that we face because of mental health disorders, challenges, issues, and because people not getting early intervention support as and when they require and mm. as and you know uh, they have a need for it. Mm. Number three, you know this entire conversation going on around sustainability. Yeah, I think one of the most important attributes of uh, sustainability is mental health. Mm. In way, in my view, way more than the environment, way more than the climate, way more than food uh, security, way more than anything else. Mental wellness is probably, and actually, let me not even use the word probability. One of the things that we have done in the book is we looked across in all 17 uh, sustainable development goals. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were able to identify that there are eight SDGs. Mm -hmm. will not be complete without a mental health intervention. Mm -hmm. It's actually, there is a full section in the book that details out those SDGs and what does mental health intervention in those SDGs really mean. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And, you know, based on, again, the work that you've been doing in this area, what are some of the systemic challenges in the mental health ecosystem and how can these be addressed? So, uh, there are three challenges that I will, that I will primarily talk mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. The first challenge uh, that we face is there is a stigma. Mm -hmm. People don't want to talk about their mental health. Mm -hmm. okay. The stigma exists because of one, they don't distinguish between mental health disorders and mental health issues. Mm -hmm. And two, there is a general perception, you know, um, an employee do doesn't want his uh, boss to know that he has any mental health issues. It will impact their uh, appraisals. It will impact their performance, you know, and blah, blah, blah. Hmm. That is one of the key challenges, which is, um, you know, simply, uh, simply uh, stigma. Hmm. The second challenge we see is availability of support. Okay, so I have a problem. I accept I have a problem and I don't have stigma around it. Hmm. Now what do I do? Hmm. Who do I go to? Where is the solution? How it is? Right. Number three, which is, you know, as pervasive as the first two, people don't want to take support unless they get into acute situations. Hmm. So the concept of early intervention and, you know, in Indian healthcare, we face it across the board. Hmm. So early intervention is what is needed and people just don't want to go for it. Right, right. Fascinating. The other thing that I would also want to get your perspective on is that, you know, in the older days, mental health used to be something that used to impact only the older age group. Now I'm told it is affecting even school children. How does mental health in older age group differ from the younger today? And what are some of the challenges? Mental health is something that impacts all age groups. Mm -hmm. Everybody, all genders, all age groups, all castes, all countries, Every human being, mm. it does not distinguish between the rich and the poor, between the young and the old. Of course, mm -hmm. manifestations of mental health across ages is very different. Right. In an older age group, the problems are more associated with, you know, healthcare related mm. mental health issues. Mm. So, you know, how will I take care of myself? What's, you know, who is there for me? And there is more loneliness at that point of time. Mm. Mm. Uh, that. In cases of uh, a younger generation, mm -hmm. mental health issues primarily arise from the environment around. Mm -hmm. They are more related to bullying if they are in school or college. Mm -hmm. They are more related to future if they are in you know workforce. They are more related to kind of looking at uh, their peer group. And what we call, so in the book, uh, one of the things that we did was we talked about the four C's of mental health. Mm -hmm. And for us, the four C's of mental health are number one, climate. Mm -hmm. Okay, Climate both has causing uncertainty amongst people mm -hmm. and also climate as being a reason for more, uh, you know, health related issues. Right. Number two, contagion. Mm -hmm. So COVID is a great example of, you know, uh, contagion and why that will impact mental health. Mm -hmm. Number three, conflict. Mm -hmm. Okay, conflict on one side, conflict is like wars that goes on across the world. We are currently in the middle of two known and probably five or seven unknown wars uh, that are happening. Or they could simply be interpersonal, uh, you know, challenges and issues. Mm. And the fourth is conformity. Mm. Requirement of an individual to be, uh, you know, conforming to what others expect from them and requirement of an individual to conform with what they expect of, of themselves. Mm. Now, depending on the individual, the age and all, in some cases, conformity is the highest. 
and in some cases you know it's contagion or uh, you know con uh, contagion or climate that mm. will become the highest mm. wonderful and i love your four the four c's uh, in your conflict uh, of conflict with climate cri climate crisis conflict contagion and conformity thank you uh, couple my next question is what role is technology playing in supporting mental health initiatives and this is over and above the app that you have or the platform that you've created in soul wellness mm -hmm. see let's first look at uh, overarching you know kind of requirement and what is available mm. mental health is not a challenge that you can solve in any way shape or form mm. without technology because mm. the scalability that you require specifically in a country like india in the kind of environment that we have is mm. not gonna... okay number 2 counseling therapy and non tech responses are only meant for the 2 to 5% that actually require that hmm. what about the 95 97 98% hmm. the third aspect uh, that we look at in terms of technology is the use of ai hmm. now while i say use of ai i want to be very very careful ai chatbots for mental health do not work at least hmm. not as of today Hmm. will we get to an age you know a few years from now when we will be able to get there absolutely i have no doubt hmm. but today, chatbots or you know uh, ai for mental health issues is you know uh, a growing field where we are trying to use uh, ai in a much larger manner in uh, soul wellness mm -hmm. is actually to create personas and profiles and actually to be able to come up with the right solutions hmm. not chatbots Hmm. Fascinating. You also spoke about the impact COVID had um, on mental health. I'd love to get your perspective on what are your findings. So COVID changed everybody's life. Hmm. I mean, let's, it's, I'm not even talking about long COVID. I'm not talking about healthcare issues. Uh, there are three aspects, critical aspects that I saw with COVID. Number one, it talked to everybody about their own morality. Hmm. Everybody is mortal. Uh, mm. You know, there is a finite timeline, and we are extremely at risk in everything. Right. We never had that mortality question with us before mm. COVID. Right. Number two, what we saw with COVID is everybody some kind of loss. Mm -hmm. So you know. Um, we used to not be as insensitive before COVID. I don't want to necessarily mean insensitive. Hmm. But we used to, uh, no, a lot of us were living in our own cocoons where we had never seen suffering, where we had never seen a uh, human life loss, where hmm. we had never seen, you know, anybody close to us really not be there anymore. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, and everybody, hmm. uh, everybody saw that. If I ask you or if I ask myself or if I ask any third person, everybody would have seen some kind of a suffering uh, as it happened with COVID. Hmm. Number three, COVID itself, because of the healthcare issues that it brought in, because of the changes that it did in people's life, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because of the way we were working earlier and the way we work now, mm -hmm. it has caused a lot of, call it stress, call it pressure, call it burnout, call it, you know, uh, all sorts of other mental health related issues that mm -hmm. have cropped up in everybody's life. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. My next question is that, you know, what advice would you have for someone who is struggling with mental health issues in silence? Uh, don't be silent. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and that's very easier uh, said than done. That is one of the things that we are trying to resolve with soul wellness. Mm -hmm. See, the challenge that people uh, suffer, really, they can't talk about it. And right. by the way, this problem of silence is more prevalent with men versus women in a lot of mm -hmm. ways. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me not say and not use the word uh, more, but is as prevalent with men uh, as it is with women. Hmm. The first thing that we tried with was to ensure that we make an anonymity option available to everyone. Mm -hmm. So when you are using the sole platform, whether you are doing journaling, joining a support group, or for that matter, any other activity, you can be anonymous. Hmm. That anonymity is an extremely crucial portion of what people require. Mm. Second, because it is a tech platform, okay, you are not necessarily talking to somebody who is sitting right next to you. Mm. See, what's the problem that people usually have? They think when they talk about their mental health issue, they will be judged 
something that they say uh, later on will be misused mm -hmm. and number 3 you know their major issues in life will be termed as trivial issues mm -hmm. that's really so uh, people suffering in silence need to get support mm -hmm. i only have time for two more questions my next yes, question sir. is how can individuals build resilience against mental health um number one by identifying what works for them mm -hmm. so see there is this concept of coping mechanisms mm -hmm. in every situation everything that we face everything mm -hmm. that goes on around us mm -hmm. we have a coping mechanism mm -hmm. that coping mechanism by others is termed as our behavior type mm -hmm. we get into you know stress and we react a certain way we get into trouble we react a certain way we get in love we react a certain way we get in hate we react a certain way most of those for many people are subconscious uh, you know mechanisms mm -hmm. first thing that people need to start looking at is to really start defining their coping mechanisms and their approaches and try to bring them in the forefront mm -hmm. so try to more be in control of those coping mechanisms See, they are there they are not there because they are bad they are there because they help you cope up with something mm -hmm. because they help you you know be sane be able to handle situations mm -hmm. so understanding your coping mechanism and then kind of really fine tuning or doing finesse around them mm -hmm. is i think what people really need to do in terms of Uh, ensuring they have the right mental resilience. Of mm -hmm. course, getting mental health support is the uh, second uh, that they need to do. Mm -hmm. But looking at their coping mechanisms, defining it, identifying and you know, uh, kind of modifying them in whatever manner they want goes a long way. Mm -hmm. Well said. And my last question to you, Kapil. Um, so let me give you an example, which are not... go ahead, go ahead, give me the example. I was saying, let me give you an example. You know, while I am driving a car and I drive a car, I don't have a driver. I drive in Delhi. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I have this habit of when I am driving, you will hear all sorts of abuses from me. Mm -hmm. Number one, I will never roll my windows down. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all of these abuses are my coping mechanism, my way of dealing with the stress on in Delhi roads. Mm -hmm. Nobody else gets to hear them. i do it but it keeps me sane mm. i will go home happy mm. i will get out of the car and i would have forgotten because you know wherever i needed to abuse wherever whatever i need uh, many people if they do this they will get in in extreme pressure i don't it is my coping mechanism sure. it doesn't work for other people but mm. it works mm. Mm. well said and my last question to you kapil given all the knowledge you have of mental health and given the fact that mental health is something which is now openly being talked about almost everywhere in the world even though much more needs to be done what future developments do you foresee in the field of mental health and wellness um first of all mental health will become uh, you know um, a solution that everybody would want to have at all, all points in their life hmm. it will almost become you know the food you eat and the air you breathe and you hmm. know the normal activity that you do uh, yeah. all around you that's the first thing that i see mm. second the concept of therapy counseling and everything mm. will become extremely novel there mm. will be you know a lot of stigma that will get taken away from it so you know in some specific uh, communities uh, there is this phrase my therapist says yeah that will become an acceptable norm versus uh, you know uh, versus an extreme mm. okay uh so and then on that note and your two amazing thoughts mental health will become a solution as we look forward and second i think this is so important therapy and counseling will become normal you now uh, you know when someone says we need therapy or someone needs counseling it is you know uh, hidden and not talked about mm -hmm. thank you couple for speaking to me about soul wellness about your book author in my head i'll ask all my viewers and listeners to go and check out kapil uh, gupta's book Uh, thank you also for speaking to me at such length about so many different aspects of mental health yeah. um thank you for talking about the global points of conflict thank you for talking about technology and uh, how there are so many challenges which was where what is amazing was when you said a very large number of people still uh, have adhd so you know i'm sure people will pick up a lot of these and have some interesting pointers from our conversation Thank you for speaking to me and good luck. Thank you so much. 
Thank you for listening to the brand called You Video Cast and Podcast. A platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.